Hi Luminosity, it's great to be with you. My name is Izzy and I work for the amazing charity Open Doors. Um, we work in over 60 countries to support persecuted Christians who are following Jesus no matter the cost. Um, so it is great to be with you and we are going to be looking at how gender injustice and persecution um, how they connect in reality and um, how we see uh, this double vulnerability of faith and gender. Now, I guess to start off with, I have a question for you. I want you to imagine that you are at school, just a normal day at school, and you're just sitting there, um, you're listening to the teacher, you're doing your work, um, and then all the girls in your class get taken, they get kidnapped. And then I want you to imagine that um, all those all those girls are released and yet you find out that one of them is still taken. One of them is still in captivity. And the reason for that is because they're a Christian. Now, this is actually a true story. This is exactly what happened to Leah Sharabu. She was just 15 when she was kidnapped in her school in Dapchi, Nigeria. And um, it was her and over 100 other girls that were kidnapped by um, an extremist group called Boko Haram. And to this day, Leah Sharabu is still in captivity. So she was targeted for her gender. She was targeted because she was a girl like the rest of those girls. But she was persecuted and remains in captivity because of her faith. And the sad reality, guys, is that this is happening all over the world. It's not just happening in Nigeria. Our Christian sisters are experiencing extreme persecution. But you might be asking, why are you specifically looking at kind of um, girls in this situation? Why is it just, why are you just focusing on them? Surely Christian men and boys experience persecution and you'd be totally right. Christian men and boys experience extreme persecution too. They are more likely to be killed for their faith. They're more likely to be put in prison for their faith. They're more likely to become, um, be forced to become a soldier for their faith. But all of these things are very visible. And so we know when it's happening, we can support them more. Um, we understand the dynamics of their form of persecution more readily. However, for Christian women and girls, they experience persecution in a slightly different way. So it's often hidden, it's violent, and it's complex. It's hidden, it's violent, and it's complex. So let's unpack this a little bit. So it's hidden in that Christian women and girls are often, um, for example, they might be forcibly married. So they might be forced to marry someone of a different faith. Or even their family might force them to stay at home if they have become a Christian. I know, for example, there's a story of a girl called Tara in India. And when she became a Christian, her family forced her to stay inside. They wouldn't even share food with her. She wasn't allowed out. Um, and so her form of persecution is hidden. It's violent in that Christian women and girls often experience sexual violence, which makes them incredibly vulnerable, um, makes them, um, you know, it's very invasive. And this type of violence is also complex because very often if that has happened to them, their families may even reject them, may think that they're tainted, they may um, have less chances in life. It's also complicated because um, often things like forced marriage blend into the society that they're in. So a family could force their daughter to marry someone that can blend into the society that they're in. And that means that it's really hard to, to know, um, you know, who these women are and, you know, they've they become a Christian, maybe on their own, um, you know, from a from a from a family of a different faith. And, you know, they're now forced within um forced within a marriage with somebody else and they can't get out so how do we reach them who will help them how do we how do we support these um these women and girls who are facing this kind of hidden persecution behind closed doors and i guess it reminds me of an amazing story in the bible in answer to that and that is of a woman called hagar um you might have heard of her uh, in the Bible, you can find her in Genesis 16. And a fun fact for you, she is the only person in the Bible that gives God a name. So it's pretty cool. But basically what happens is in Genesis 16, um, Abraham and Sarah, who you might have heard of, um, God gives Abraham and Sarah an amazing promise that they will have a child. The problem is, as humans, we often try and fulfil what um, God's promised for us ourselves don't we and so they try and kind of fulfill the promise themselves and Abraham actually ends up getting 
um, his Egyptian servant, Hagar, pregnant, and um, she has a baby. And when this baby is born, Ishmael, Sarah, the Abraham's wife, really mistreats her. And so Hagar decides to flee. And when she's in this desert place, she's fled, she has nothing, she's scared, she's alone, she's feeling humiliated, she's feeling outcast. Who understands her? Who Who is there for her? And in that desert place, God finds her. And she gives God the name, Elroy, you are the God who sees me. You are the God who sees me. And this is exactly you know, the truth for Leah Sharabu and for Tara in India and for other Christian girls and women who are facing persecution behind closed doors today. We have a God who sees them. We have a God who knows them. We have a God who loves them and they know him. And that is so encouraging as we think about this incredibly complicated and devastating issue. And I saw this amazing promise of a God who sees these incredible women. Uh, When I went to Nigeria a couple of years ago, I went to a trauma centre that Open Doors Local Partners run. um, And it was just so awesome. The people were amazing um, and the food was delicious too. And um, at this trauma centre, I met a, a woman called Christy. And she actually is a pastor's wife. And very sadly, like Leah Sharabu, she was kidnapped because of her faith. And in fact, she was kidnapped because she was the pastor's wife. So she was literally targeted for both being a woman and for being a Christian. And she spent about four months um, in the forest with another kind of extremist group called the Fulani. Um, Well, a kind of extremist uh, group within the Fulani uh, kind of ethnic group, really. And she spent about four months with them, with these kidnappers, uh, just had the most horrific experiences. But finally, she was released. And when they released her, they literally just left her in the forest. She was with her baby and she was with another woman who was severely injured. And uh, she didn't know where to go. And I remember her saying to me, you know, Izzy, there were just gunshots everywhere. We didn't know what to do. We didn't know where to go. And they they, they ran and they hid, um, you know, behind this rock. And she prayed and she said, God, if you want us to stay alive, you've got to tell us where to go. And she felt God say to her, Christy, follow the direction of the moon. And so they walked for hours and hours and hours through the night. And every turn, they'd be like, right, we need to follow the direction of the moon. We need to follow um, where God is leading us. And finally, they saw a little footpath to a village. And, you know, it was really good. They were really excited, but also they didn't know what kind of village it would be. They didn't know if it was a Muslim village or a Christian village or what village it would be. And so they were, they kind of were cautious. And when they got to the village, they saw a little building with a cross on it and they thought, oh, it might be a church. And they, and they went in and they found in there a guy who um, was at Christie's church, but in a completely different village. And he had just been on the phone calling the kidnappers, you know, saying, where are these women? Like trying to get her released. And so God had literally directed her, her baby and this other woman through the forest for hours and hours and hours to exactly the place of refuge that she needed to be. That is such an amazing story of a God who sees us, a God who sees these amazing women. And during my time in Nigeria, I also had the most amazing opportunity to um, hear these women's stories and for them to take part in something called the Handmade Petition that we were doing then. Um, And what that was, was we asked supporters um, as well as these women to write the words, I see you and their name on a piece of fabric and you could embellish it and do all sorts of creative things, write poems on it, whatever you want, scripture. And these women took part and they they were able to share their stories. And over 16,000 supporters in the UK did this petition. Um, And then we also got pieces from women in the trauma centre in Nigeria, but also in 12 other countries. So from Mexico, Colombia, Bangladesh, Iraq, all sorts of places. And then we sewed them all together and we put them in Westminster Abbey Cathedral and a bunch of MPs came. And, um, you know, these people are really influential. And how amazing is it then that a God who sees these women's stories all the way in Nigeria, you know, in the middle of the forest, and then their story is being told by people in a completely different place, by people who have the power to change things. And since then, we've had a whole load of really cool, um, you know, 
things that have happened that MPs have engaged with, um, influencers, people with power who are really um, starting to speak out and understand this double vulnerability. And the other thing that I really loved about the Hamo petition is we sewed it all together. We united together. We stood as a church together and said, you know, even if the world doesn't see these women, we as a church see them because God sees them and we will support them and love them and pray for them and fight for them, even if they are suffering behind closed doors and don't even know that other people are fighting for them. We will stand our ground and support them and love them because we know that so many millions of Christian women and girls are facing this kind of extreme persecution. So I wonder, you know, maybe you're feeling like, oh, what can I do for women like Christy or Leah or Tara? What can I do? What, how can I respond? Yes, I can pray. Yes, I can, you know, I can listen to these stories. But the amazing thing is, is we can actually partner with God to engage with these issues. We're not just one person. We are united as a church. And so there's three things I would love to encourage you to do following on from this. First of all, of course, I would love for you to pray for these women. Join with Open Doors in this campaign. It's called the Sea Change Campaign. You can find details on our website. Um, pray. Uh, maybe you could even write your prayers on a piece of paper or embellish them or write a poem. So please pray. The second thing you could do is you could ask God to show you how to engage with the issues he's put on your heart creatively. You know, could you do a creative campaign? Could you could you write to your MP in a creative way? Could you, you know, could you, I don't know, do something like do a drawing to explain an issue? Could you, um, you know, get a load of people to do something um, that looks a bit different, that isn't just standard so that then people don't switch off, but they hear things in a new way. How could you um, use your gifts to engage with the issues that God's put on your heart? And the third thing I want to say is that God sees you. He knows you. He loves you. He is for you. If you're feeling alone, if you're feeling outcast, if you're feeling um, you know, humiliated, if you're feeling misunderstood, God knows you. He's in that place with you. Or maybe you know someone else in that space. There is the promise of God, the Elroy, the one who sees us. So please be encouraged um, to, yeah, to know that and experience that. And um, yeah, hopefully we will get in touch soon and hear from you more. Have a great rest of your time at Luminosity. God bless you. Bye. Thank you.